sure that we're live on Facebook. Looks like we are. And we are live on Instagram. All right, cool. Yay. Hi. Okay, there we go. All right, technical difficulties. So first and foremost, our apologies for being 17 minutes late from what we planned on. And my name is Anushka Alborzian. I'm an empowerment health coach and energy healer. I am Samar Tehrani. I am a therapist and my area of expertise is addictionology out of Virginia. Awesome. And we're still excited to continue collaborating together in staying positive. And that does not mean not feeling the feelings. That's actually one of the things that we wanted to talk about today with the law of attraction. Uh, I love law of attraction. It's actually what personally had me completely shift my life back in 2007 when The Secret came out. And I know we've had conversations around this, but yeah, this is what I, I love talking about law of attraction. Yeah. I think when The Secret came out for a lot of us, a lot of people that we just were not quite, um, familiar with this concept and idea, you know, um, we started to just barely learn like what exactly it is, right? Totally. And not that people weren't practicing this maybe without really naming it law of attraction or whatnot. But then it almost gave people, it, including myself and it sounds like it, you as well, a um, platform and a learning. It was like, okay, so this is what you need to do. But I do have to tell you that with the secret, and I think a lot of people maybe had also like experienced what I did. It's like, okay, I get it, but now how do you do it? And that how to do it is kind of the roadmap and the learning process of how the law of attraction works, mm -hmm. right? And there's things that were, that were left out in the secret. And that's why I wanted to really talk more about that as well, because yes, words are very powerful thoughts are very powerful absolutely and really the it's, it's it is a new thought philosophy and I, i'm looking it up right here it says the law of attraction is the belief that positive or negative thoughts bring positive or negative experiences into our life right so that's really the vague version of it and there is more that goes into that it's not just oh let me just sit on my couch and think positively and things are just gonna come to me no that's not what it's about so that's why i thought that this would be a great topic to discuss today and really talk more about the how and the other parts that are involved i remember anushka at the time when this all came out i think it was jim carrey that um someone was interviewing him and he was actually talking about the law of attraction and how he wrote himself this like million dollar check and put it in his wallet. And yeah. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, a hundred percent. That's like an example I use all the time. Yes. Yeah. And, and I remember this actually like quite vividly that he said something that was kind of interesting and it goes right along what you mentioned just right now. It isn't like you write that $1 million check to yourself and put it in your wallet and look at it every day, right? And then just by looking at it, things are going to happen. Now you're going to go out there and do the work, right? Mm -hmm. but Take the action, yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Set goals, you know, have a roadmap of this needs to be done and that needs to be done. But my understanding of the law of attraction is that by, so in form of that check, every time you look at it, your brain waves go on that pathway of thinking, which leads you and your road to your step actions become easier because you, you know, that's how you're thinking. You're thinking about that million dollars that, for example, that you're going to make and not the lack of it or your inability, right? You see how it's you're, and then, totally different. Yeah, you're pulling it towards you. You're pulling that future towards you by taking those actions as that future self. And that's something that I've really learned. And the biggest thing that is missing in a lot of the law of attraction stuff is we got to clear blocks first. We got to clear out, you know, it's, it's that saying of, hey, you can't pour rose petals on top of a, and I, I know I've said this before, you can't pour rose petals on the top of a pile of, crap and expect it to smell good you've got to clear the blockages out you got to get rid of a lot of these things first and foremost 
and then create from there. So that is actually one of the things that I definitely want to talk about. And then, like you said, taking those inspired actions is crucial. You can't um, just sit, like I said, like, it's so funny because sometimes Ashka and I have these conversations like, but law of attraction, I don't want to just sit on my, I'm like, nobody says sit on your couch and things just come to you. <laughs> and yeah. that, that is a misconception that is out there. Yeah, it's definitely a misconception. And I think that, um, I mean, for me, a pivotal point was when I realized I understand this theoretically. I understand it. Like, I can listen to this, you know, information and understand it. I can read it and understand it, but I don't know how to apply it. And that was a pivotal point for me. And then I remember right, right about that time is when I was introduced to Louise Hay's work, which we mm. often talk about here. And she so simply teaches you, you know, how to, you know, like the roadmap, like she has it, right? She talks about it. She talks about negative thoughts versus positive thoughts. She, and then that really was a huge help to me to understand that, ah, this is how it's done. So mm -hmm. when somebody compliments me, I don't say, oh, no, ho, ho, ho. I don't say that. I, I say thank you. Before I mean, you receive, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Learn how to receive. And, and the law of attraction exactly talks about that. Like, learn how to receive. And one of the things that, in fact, Louise Hay said um, in her work is, if you're not a good receiver, it's never going to come to you. And you know how sometimes you give somebody a gift mm -hmm. and they don't know what to do with it because they don't know how to receive a gift? Right. And yeah. she uses that as an example. And then the next time you want to buy him a gift, you're like, well, I don't know if I'll just give him some money or, do you know what I mean? So you're not going to actually go out there and like spend your energy and time and can't pick, you know, a small, great, unique gift for them because they're not good receivers. Yeah. So they block and there's that, that exchange energy. of energy too, right? For the givers, it is a gift for them to give. And so you, it, 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 I always use that as an example. It's like, well, how would you feel if you want to give something to someone and you're feeling all joyful to give it? And then all of a sudden they're like, Ugh. well, that goes with everything, not just an actual physical gift. It's the same thing with compliments. Like you said, it's the same thing with love. It's the same thing with so many things. And so it's really allowing that exchange of energy and that receive, give, receive, give. I believe that that's that's the flow. That's the flow when it comes to money, even anything, right? Food <laughs> can go on with all the things. Right. And you know, and I remember when I worked with my blocks of um, money, then it, it, it didn't really matter how much I had, you know, at times I had more, other times I had less, but it no longer really mattered, like how much I had, my needs were met. Right. I could still go on my vacations. I still ate well. I still dined out with my friends. And sometimes I had more, sometimes I had less. But then once the concept, once you learn the concept, then there's learning that goes along with it. So if you yeah. want it to work for you, you have to learn and you have to open yourself to learning to become receiver and also in exchange to be giver as well. It's not just about receiving. It's about this energy that we constantly Absolutely. talk about to learn how to healing. Flow. Yes. yes. So like, and so underneath that, cause that's one of the things I really wanted to point out too. And we have a lot of questions coming in, which I love. I love the engagement. We'll get to you shortly. Uh, but when I, one, one thing I really do want to clarify this whole receive and give it's the energy bit. It's a matter of feeling it. So when we actually allow our body to fully open up and feel then, and without doubt, without, and that goes with anything, right? Without any doubt saying that, oh, you know, maybe in your dreams it is to get a $10 million check. Who knows? I bet Jim Carrey fully felt that that was going to happen and he had no doubt within him and he was taking the actions to do so. There was, that's a big part of it is to actually feel it as if it's already yours. And that's something he talks about. He always he said, about he's like, I it was as if it was already mine it was already coming to me it was already his it was just a matter of time for it to actually become a physical thing so that was a huge part of it as well so i really wanted to because that is crucial so it's clearing the whole energy of it and then feeling it as if it's already so 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think what's really important is, you know, when, um, and the, well, so here is one a point, and then we should probably move to the questions because the questions mm -hmm. will lead us. Um, yeah. I think which way to go. But what's one of the things that I found um, really important was as I was learning, right? I didn't question the learning. I just, the information, I was like, well, let me just practice it and see what will come of it. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things I did, I had this little tiny office in Arlington, Virginia. And one of the things that they talk about law of attraction is be grateful for the space that brings you money. So every time I would open the door to go in, I would say, thank you so much for supporting my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then when I would leave at the end of the night or whatever to go home, I would look at my office and I would say, I'm so grateful that you provide. And then like the number of my patients went from like 10 all of a sudden to 30 within a matter of a month right? Because as you become grateful, the flow just kind of starts. And I was baffled by it. I was like, oh my God, this stuff actually works. It's not voodoo, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. And I, I saw this quote, I haven't had a chance to post it yet, but one of the things is it says, what you think starts a vibration that influences how you feel, impacts what you attract and creates your reality. So choose your thoughts wisely. And that right there, that's everything. Everything is connected. That's so that, that to me, I'm like, that is law of attraction. That is manifestation. Yeah. So yes, this let's me and you know, and be aware that this doesn't mean that um, we're not, you know, once we accept this, it's only bliss and you know, peaches and cream. That doesn't mean that no. life happens to us and then what the law of attraction teaches us is that we can look at the situation, whatever it may be, right? However sad, however horrible it seems to us to see, say, where is my learning in this? Yep. What was the gift? Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. And what, what, why am I experiencing this? And to find the goodness in it because mm -hmm. it's all experiences after all. Right. Absolutely. And it's, I mean, I just went through something yesterday, for instance, for those of you that yeah. are on my social media, I, my happy place is volleyball and I burst it out in tears in my happy place. Like, how does that happen? And I'm not going to get into the details of it, but that was a gift. And for me, I was able to look and see, oh, there's more to be healed. And I went through some healing with Jacob earlier today and a, such a better frequency. Actually, really what made a difference is working with one of my clients and seeing the shift in her was fulfilling for me to actually start moving through it. But I didn't ignore it. I didn't suppress it. I allowed myself to feel a feeling and I didn't get stuck in that. Cause the thing is like attracts like, right? But we also don't want to do the spiritual bypassing, which means, Oh, let me always feel good. And that's something that I do not to me. I'm actually like very much, against that <laughs> because I believe that we need to express the feelings that we feel. I believe that we need to cry when we need to, we need to scream when we need to. So that's another big piece of it too. It is. So it's really all about that, the energetic flow. That's all Absolutely. it is. Yep. And how are you flowing? Are you blocking? Are you releasing, you know, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And that's what the learning is. So, all right, let's answer some all questions. All right, yes, let's go to the questions. All right, so let me start. I'll start with Instagram because I think that's the first one I saw. So, uh, I believe it's Abi Farouk who's always engaging. I love it. Um, let me see. How to? How do I deal with egotistic people? It feels that my ears are in control. Let me see. There's another egoistic people. I'm not understanding this. Um, something about listening, my ears, how this energy works for them. I don't, can you repeat what you wanted to ask? I mean, I'll go to the next question because I'm not understanding what you mean by the ears. There's something egoistic people with your ears. I'm not sure about what you're, Question is, if you don't mind just re-asking that, and then I'll go to the other question and we'll come back to you. Um, so let's see. Oh, Robin on Facebook says, hey, Anushka, I would like to ask, is love and attraction should be between married couples? 
So I'm not understanding that either. <laughs> well, of course. See, but, so okay, do you get it? Okay, please do. Yeah, because I'm like, okay. Yes, law of attraction is everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, it all depends. And um, Jacob, the other day on one of your videos, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to refer to what he said about relationships. He said that people think that if their relationship ends, it's a bad thing, for example. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe that relationship has termed out, timed out, um, served its purpose. purpose. Exactly. It served its purpose and it's time, right? We have a tendency to get stuck in it, but relationships, it doesn't matter what relationships are, whether they're sibling relationships, they're romantic relationships, social relationships, relationships require work attention and you know and work so whether you know again you know this question um is love and attractive should be between married couples i mean why not right should yeah. love and attraction of course it should be but yeah. how, are you can you receive it can you give it you know the question really becomes are you able to receive love are you able to receive kindness are you able to um, give love and give kindness and is it is it are the two parties willing to work on it or not right so Absolutely. then you have to answer those questions for yourself that it does this relationship have those components or not yeah, and I, so absolutely. And, and then it becomes communication because like we were saying with law of attraction, mm -hmm. communication and words are very important. So if you're constantly coming from that negative, because we talked about law of attraction, right? So if you're constantly coming from that negative, those negative thoughts, well, you're going to be having more of the negative experiences with your partner or any relationship really right so it really that's part of it too and it it's about how you communicate with one another how things are impacting you rather than blaming and complaining and being a victim and i think that sometimes we have to um, remember that where we are in our own process our partners may not be and um, that doesn't mean the law of attraction is not working if you're in you know once you learn how this process works for you and you tune in, um, it's, it really then makes it not about the other person, it makes it about you. It mm -hmm. makes it about you and your own process. And you know, asking um, the universe to kind of open up and, and answer your specific questions and whatever they may be. Should I hold this job? Should I um, mm -hmm. Get a new job? Should I move? Should, you know, all of the questions that we have. Is it to my best interest to? And that's what I was going to say. No uh, shoulds, but is it no going to benefit? Is it, yeah. to my, is it to the best of my, um, you know, good to keep this person as a friend? Is it? Do you know what I mean? And all yeah. of, them, mm -hmm. and the universe will lead you. Absolutely, and and you can even ask like, universe, show me a sign. Is it in my highest good to? Like, like you said, stay with this person, or is it in my highest good to purchase this car, or is it in my highest good to blah, 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 right? Whenever you make those, ask those questions and ask them specifically, and then you open your eyes and look for the signs and you want to get specific. Like for instance, I have a friend, she's been going back and forth about getting a Tesla. So she's asked for the past couple of weeks, she keeps asking the sign universe, show me a red Tesla if that's, if it's meant for me to get this car or show me a, another car if it's not. And so for her, she's getting the signs for her to see, is this in my best interest as well? So that's something that, um, that I wanted to add on to that. But yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, I'm getting more questions. Okay, so let's see. Okay, he re responded and how to deal with egotistic people if it feels if feel me it feels me that my ears are in control what i think silently in my mind they are listening to me okay so i'm thinking what you're saying is you feel like 
There are egotistic people that can read your mind. I think that's what I'm hearing in that. Um, so while we're waiting, um, Navi Chamluz asked, what do you suggest when it comes to communication when our culture has the tendencies of quote unquote tarot, yeah. not, uh, not to be honest in your needs and communication? So, you know, um, so obviously we have to, in my opinion, you know, and how I deal with um, these tendencies of my culture, these are cultural things, you know, mm -hmm. like Tarot is a sort of a, um, it's an endearment communication in my opinion, right? Like, would you like some tea? No, thanks. Oh, no, please have some tea. Oh, no, 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 thanks, right? And it's this kind of back and forth. And to me, I finally learned that it's actually this exchange of endearment energy, mm -hmm. right? Now, in a collectivist culture, that endearment and that, um, th that tendency works. In an individualistic culture, which we live in in the US, you know, when somebody says no, for the most part, like if you offer someone something and they say no, um, you accept it because in an individualistic culture, what happens is you are taught to express your needs. In a collectivist culture, you're supposed to be more in co conscious of the collective need, right? So it works a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So then the, and then we have to, with, it, with people that are in our very, very direct circle, we need to become very clear as far as, no, I need you to tell me exactly your need and please express to me what you would like from me, right? So those, yeah. that becomes then a communication. I mean, I remember growing up and, you know, like, for example, my mom would say something and then I would go do, like, not do it or do it or whatever it was. And then she's like, no, nah, no, no, no. When I said this, I meant that. And I used to think, I don't have a little person in your brain that, like, translates your messages to me. Like, <laughs> I had such a hard time you know, switching back and forth because, again, it's a cultural issue. And she was trying to teach me, I mean, I, I think because we were so young when they, we left Iran that she wanted us to have that culture. So, and then in an individualistic culture, it was absolutely insane, right? We don't even have the words. You can't even translate the word tarof to English because it doesn't exist. And for me, and I grew up here, I, mean, I grew up even less in Iran, but for me personally, when it comes to that, the first thing I say to people when they come over, where I go, please, I'm like, look, I don't know tarof. I'm just being straight with you because I don't want to play that game. To me, it's a game and I don't, I'm not interested in it. It feels inauthentic for me. This is my personal thing because to me, I'm like, I want to be authentic. I want to say, Hey, this is, this is what I want. And this is what I don't want. And I don't want it to get pushed to me or vice versa. Cause I don't know how, how many times, like five times, seven times. Like, <laughs> so for me, it's a game. It's a game that is a, is played culturally and I actually am a huge believer of changing that part of the culture <laughs> because it goes to it, it there's so much deeper levels of that and it, it creates an authenticity in in communication it creates an authenticity in relationships even because you never know what somebody truly desires and again and I think it, you know, that goes to being more in tune to the individualistic culture that teaches us to be authentic and authenticity in this culture means mm -hmm. express your needs directly yeah okay. yeah so so within this culture I complete I you know I understand now we're going way over time by the way I know I realize that and we still have questions coming in <laughs> uh, Robin okay. um, well, then, yeah. Let me see what Robin says. Thank you um, and suggestion. You both gave very particular and realistic answers. You both are very strong mm -hmm. ladies. Thank you, Robin. Thank That's you. Very Thank you, Robin. We will and fully then, receive um, that energy. energy. Huh? <laughs> so we will fully receive that energy. Thank you. That's so sweet of you. Um, Tarof with oneself and absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you are being unauthentic, right? If you are having problems facing yourself, of course, you're going to have a conflict that to me isn't taught off with the self it's having conflict with how you are and who you are in your present moment so i hope that and i um, answered that question and for that you. to me intuition so when you start following your intuition 
you no longer have that taught off or that indecisiveness of the back and forth because your inner guide knows. That's right. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I'm more than happy to have a session with you. <laughs> She's your girl. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm all about intuition, so. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you right. so much. Um, yes, thank it's you. With you again. And yes. And I, I'm sorry, I know that Abid, you know, you ended up writing again, but we're right, we ran out of time. I will take a look at that question and I'll Answer message it. you. Yeah, I'll message you separately on Instagram. All right. Bye, -bye. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for your engagement and joining us. And again, if you're looking, and wanting to take your health and well-being to the next level, you're more than welcome to message us separately, reach out to us, and we'll have one-off sessions as well. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.